the world is different. Beyond a lifetime ago, a war between nature and civilization arose overnight, seemingly without reason. Fifty years ago, it paused in a tense stalemate. One year ago, on a cold winter's day, the mountainous city of Bulwark erupted as its long-held godly prisoner escaped his chains from beneath the stone. The decimation was the righting of a great wrong, but a terrible price was paid. Our heroes, who set the freedom and destruction in motion, were called to the lands of their former enemy to help this god on his path to reascension. Their mission complete, their eyes turn back to a threat at home. They look at their footprints, at the trail that they've blazed, a trail that led them to redemption and peace. Now, the same footprints lead them back home, and they walk a path where they might just find the end. And as the sun rises over the summit, they face the day together. Hello. And welcome back to another path. My name is Chase, and I continue to be your GM. Today, a long-awaited reunion. Thank you to our backers, Tyler, Joel, and Xander, for their support. If you like what you hear, and you like what we've been doing, consider donating to us at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia. With that, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. Yeah, this is this is weird. This is the least people I have recorded. I went from recording with the most people I've recorded a, f- a full episode with to the least. Yeah, there's two of us. Yeah. Oh, are it's we strange. the first of the group? Yes. Okay. Hold on. What, uh, what spell? Hold on. We have spells to prep. <laughs> Hold on, I forgot about this. Yeah, I was <laughs> prepping spells earlier. I was like, oh, should I take this spell or should I take this spell? I want I to play D and D again, this. and I want to play like a real caster. Real casters are really fun. Yeah, I know, but like, I like, I had Dakota, and Dakota's great, and I miss Dakota a lot. I almost spent like. Tw- 30 bucks on dice for Dakota, a character I may never play again. Oh, you'll uh, play him again. Might be a different name, man. but you'll play him again. I mean, look, I will always play a cowboy wizard. Isn't isn't that the sad truth? We just play the same three characters over and over and over. We just name them differently and give them different <laughs> skins. <laughs> look, I've only done that once so far. I used to be really good about, like, okay, I just want to play the polar opposite. Look, I just went from less than intelligent shiny boy fighter to slightly brooding elf. Like, Mm -hmm. those are two of my mains right there. (laughs) That's it. Right? Uh, I haven't gotten to play uh, uh, a sorcerer with severe daddy issues yet, but we'll get there. We'll get, I mean, we'll get back to it. That was the first D&D character you played. Yeah. 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 I want to play a wizard, I think. I th- I think I want to play a divination wizard next for like a long-term character. Cool. Yeah. But more than that, going back ex- directly to your point, Ryan, I want to go back to to my Dragonborn Rogue that I was playing under Christina. I miss my boy. Kern was a lot of fun. Same three characters, different skins. Uh, different races? Different races. Different races. Is that our races just skins? I I get their their flavors. I think yeah. flavors and skins are two different things. Yeah. Yep. Like, I I think the skin is, like, the archetype. Because we definitely hang around similar archetypes for sure. That's true. Griffin wants nothing more to play than to play sneaky, sta- sneaky, stabby archer. Aragorn. He wants to play Aragorn, and I support him. He wants to play Aragorn, or he wants to play Hawkeye, or some combination thereof. I have zero desire to have a bow. I don't want that. That sounds boring. I've never played an archer. The closest I, the closest I got was my first character in this group, um, who was just Gambit. That yeah. I just Martin, realized yeah. who Addie's yeah. reskin former self was. Who's that? It's Tindra, the freaking pyromancer yep. who was everybody's mom. Pyromancer. All right, so we're done. We're done now. Chase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chase, no, I did it. You're done. I did it. You're done. Uh, you're in Ugh. you're in timeout now. Uh-huh. I I should I should warn you, Chase. 
I I have the ability to cast Fireball at six level. I can only do it once, <laughs> but I can fucking do it. Noted. Noted. Y'all, I'm looking through these Humblewood spells. Yeah? Oh, they're pretty cool. Yeah, they're just a little buck wild. Yeah. I am. Um, no, Humblewood does not mess around. They're pretty neat. Are those like Feywild spells? Um, yes, and they're, they're no. like they're just like woods themed. Okay. Yeah, they're they're woods. They're they're foresty. Sometimes they're fey, but they're more just like here's some cool grass stuff. We're all grass types now. Hmm. You get a grass type. You get a grass type. Nothing wrong with a grass type. Give me a little Bulbasaur. They're great. All right, I think I'm ready to go. Okay. And I have I have the line he, right here that the intro will fade in over. Okay. I do not have Revivify prepared. All right. Jackson thinks he's by himself. It's true. You can't Revivify yourself. Can't Revivify it's, yourself. It's, it, it's not the first rule of D&D, but it's like the fifth. Listen. It's on the list. We can always hope that there's a day or a campsite between here and where we need to go, and then you have a... a I really guessing there's not. I Ryan am fine with this decision. No, it it it's a good decision. Sure. This is fine. No, it's great. I love this. But I, can I motivational speech myself? Is it a little masturbatory? Yes. Will I allow it? Yeah. 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 Yep. I can do that. <laughs> Just All give right. yourself a little pep talk. Give myself a little pep talk. A little magic pep talk. Look, man, I got a list of things right here. I can just buff myself out the wazoo. That's where you'll want to get buffed. That's, yeah. All right. All right. Everybody ready? <sighs> okay. Let's do this. All right. Jackson Silver. It takes you about an hour or so to get packed up and ready to go. You've said your goodbyes. You take your leave of your suite in the Hall of Open Secrets and walk down the stairs silently. Gary, riding ever in your breastplate, snuggles ever closer, sensing the tension that has pervaded the last couple hours. Your feet touch the floor of the main chamber of the Hall of Open Secrets. All right. You good down there, Gary? Yeah. I'm, I'm, are you good up there? Um, you know, when God calls... You gotta answer. You gotta go. You gotta go. Gotta answer. Man, this would be a lot easier if I was not answering. Hey, Gary, do you still want to come with, or you want to... I guess you, you, you don't have to come. You can stay here with God, Mom. Nah, that ain't for me. I'm, I'm with you. Thanks, buddy. You got it. Here's some bacon. Hell yeah. Please don't, please don't drop it down my breastplate this time. It was so hard to get out. I got it eventually. It tickled <laughs> and hurt. I got it. It's fine. Thank you. <sighs> All right. So I, I look around the Hall of Open Secrets. Has anybody left? Atticus is there, and he is waiting for you. Hey there, Jackson, right? Yep, I also checked. All right, well, let's uh, let's get you going here. Um, do you want... Jeez. Uh, so I, uh, I looked at the map. I know about right. where we're heading. I can get you about two days from your destination. Two days? Two days. Come on, man. I thought, uh... Look, Mordecai said you were the good one. I'm limited by the kind of trees that are available. And oh, unfortunately... Okay. So you're playing favorites. Okay. I'm not. I see. I see. And how I'm close not. Are you? I just have to how play with close? the timeline because some people decided to go in a bunch of different directions, and somebody's got to make it work. <laughs> are you okay, Atticus? Sorry. Whoa. Just like I just kind of like saw everything all at once for a second there. Yeah, you know that's not your god. That's Baylitz. Uh, uh, look. I don't know what that meant or what that was, but it's the truth of the matter that uh, I am limited by the kind of trees that I know where they are. That but is in 
That's great. What, uh, out of curiosity. Yes. What is your favorite tree? Uh, the Northern Elm. It's got a really nice, uh, like, lighter tint to the wood, but the bark is uh, uh, really easy to flake off. Jackson's, eye, Jackson's eyes have glazed over, and he's just thinking about other things. Okay. <laughs> right. Goes, so. That's, oh, wait, hold on. And Jackson uh, grabs, I guess if I'm going back to an Amaranth yeah, temple, hold on. We found this out last time. And I turned the, the pauldrons and, you know, kind of click through, and the colors kind of scroll through and mm-hmm. i stop on red for fire resistance yep. good call all right Ooh. all right new colors mm. i will stand out like a sore thumb yeah just a bit because, because sore thumbs are red atticus mm. i'm sorry man i'm out of i'm out of jokes uh, i don't know this is bigger than anything we've done yet and that's saying something totally fair all right are you um but are you ready to go Let's get it done. All right. Let's uh let's head out. All right. And the two of you leave. Um you walk through a decent number of the streets of Lee before you make your way to a gate and you are privy to just how much destruction this city has seen over the last 24 hours. It is significant. Um, reconstruction efforts have already started, but you also see the scars and marks and the death that this riot has brought. Lives were lost while you were fighting, and not just ones on your side either. Buildings are burnt and gone. You know, Atticus, about a year and a half ago, I was just trying to find my next meal, and the world was a... Well, I don't know if it's better then, but it was more mm-hmm. whole. Mm-hmm. That's uh, kind of how it goes sometimes, though. So you know how you guys travel around and try to put out fires and s- slay bog monsters and just kind of make your world a better place? That's the goal. Do you ever feel like you're the cause of the problem? At that, Atticus stops and his shoulders just kind of sag. And he puts his hands in his pockets and just kind of sighs. Sometimes. I worry about that sometimes. But I also know that if I spend the my entire life in my head second-guessing everything that I do... I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit there and worry and worry. Or I can do what I think is right and do right by the people me and mine care about. It's a good way to live your life. I do what I can. It does just kind of feel like death follows us everywhere, at least for the last year and a half. But I don't know. Maybe... Maybe it's because we're always in the bad places and we don't get to see the good. That's the thing about doing things. You don't get to do them from the good places often. Yeah. A really wise dragon dude once told me that nobody gets to live to see themselves become a hero. Hmm. And all we can do is whatever, whatever we think is the best thing we can do. I like that. Well, he's kind of a shit, but... Well, yeah. I mean, most people are, my experience Most people least. are. But he's not wrong. All right, Atticus, let's... Uh... Man, I'm not going to be a hero. All right, let's see if we can... See if we can get me somewhere I can do some good. Let's. As you've continued talking, he has led you out of the city, through the farmlands... He reaches um, a field that has a uh, a ton of flowers just growing. Um, they're really unique. You've never seen anything quite like them. They're uh, blue and yellow and white. 
each of the petals have these stripes that go down them, and they are dotted with points of deeper saturation. So you get this very strange optical illusion effect directly as you're looking at this, you know, this farm full of them that are inexplicably are growing in the middle of winter. Perfect. These will do. All right. Ready? No. Let's go. Reaches out and places his hand among the flowers, and you see this optical illusion ripple as all of them seem to react to his touch. As you step into the flower, suddenly you are bouncing from instance of these flowers to instance of these flowers to instance of these flowers. You are seeing images of the wild just flash in front of you. You see a place in the middle of the woods. You see clove. You see another place in the middle of the woods. You see senge. You see another place in the woods, another place in the woods, another place in the woods, and then suddenly you stop. Oh, uh, <coughs> oh boy. Constitution oh, check. Boy. Whew. 16. Okay. You do not yarts. Right. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you did pretty well. Nice. Right? That uh, was... How is that worse than going through the deep world? Oh, man. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to Batula. Batula. Oh, okay. You look around, and you are in a small village in the middle of the woods. All right. You see many people going about. It's snowier here than it was down south. There are not many people in this specific uh, vicinity, and everyone you do see is pretty heavily bundled up. Um, Almost immediately, you see Atticus dip into a hut and come back out with a blanket thrown over his shoulders. He um, tosses you three blankets as well. You might want these. Yeah, it's, oh boy, this is not where we were. Yeah, it's, um, the, the, the climate change between the, the cities is really something. I've never been able to put my finger on it. We're actually, one of the things we're trying to figure out here is exactly why that is. Um, drastic temperature changes out here from location to location. But, uh, yeah, not yeah, I, super I, mild I, up here. So you're going to have to. I yeah. guess it would, uh, I guess it doesn't jump out as much if you can't travel like that huh exactly all right let's is there an inside or are we just walking um so this is this is where i am gonna be leaving yeah i gotta i gotta take a nap after that and then i'm gonna hop back down to lee and you know keep an eye on things as they go there you're welcome to rest up here if you need to um this is my hut you're welcome to hop in avail yourself of whatever food or whatnot you think you'll need and um yeah, we'll be uh, hopefully hearing from you soon. Yeah, I I hope so. Well, thank you for everything you've done. Thanks for coming. Like I said, I, I, I do right by mine and the those of that I care about. And apparently Mordecai's blood. So that makes you about as close. Yeah, it kind of does. You be safe. You too. Clasp arms. Yep. S- send him on his way. Um. He uh, gives you a, kind of like a half-hearted salute and then dips back into uh, the house that he uh, motioned as his. And he also lets you know, oh, 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 right, uh, before I go to bed, you gonna want to go that way. It's uh, a, a bit northeast of here, two days straight, but uh, you'll be, you'll, you can't miss it. It's a big fucking tower in the middle of nowhere. Great. Anything I need to be concerned about besides this cold um i don't know about anything inside uh apparently it's some kind of forge to your god which is neat and all but uh atticus that's not the part i'm worried about that i'm supposed to go there and do this really cool thing i guess i don't know what it is but that part fine i just don't want to die between here and there because there's a bunch of wolves i wouldn't worry too much most of the wildlife out here is uh down for the winter Ah, so you shouldn't have too much to worry at this point um there's no thinnings between the fey wild between here and there either so you shouldn't have any like darklings or whatnot sneaking up on you i do don't want to deal with them again they are terrible. Is there a path? Um, I'm looking for another one. 
into traffic, Albrecht, pushing you into traffic. There's a path for about half a day that way. And then it fades right. off into nothing. Like, like I said, not a whole lot else up there. No one's been ever been able to get in because apparently it's not a tower. Perfect. All right. Well, I guess I'll start walking. Have fun. Yeah. I will uh, wrap the blankets around me. I'm sure I've got, you know, bedding or whatever else for yep. whatever I need to camp. I'll be fine. Um, and just kind of head that way. Start walking. Mm-hmm. And you start walking. Two days is a long time to be in your own thoughts and in your own head. What does Jackson think about in that time? Well, he keeps an eye on the concordance because one of the things Saphir said is that the names on it might change. So he kind of keeps track of that. The concordance is silent, which everybody is traveling and you, you know that. Everybody is just moving. But beyond that, it's a lot of, um, it's some, some kind of talking with Gary, some kind of just, uh, a little bit of trying to have Gary teach him, uh, Fay French, I think, <laughs> because, uh, Jackson didn't know that's what Godmom spoke. So, uh, uh, uh Ryan, Ryan, it's Fay French, Fay French, Fay French or Fay French. <laughs> Fuck you, not, Chase Greenlee. <laughs> it's not French, A. Eh? No, no, it's Fay okay. Wrench. Fay Wrench, okay. Let me write that down. <laughs> Fay Wrench. And I want you to know that I'm spelling wrench with a W. Naturally, naturally. Yeah. That's how you spell it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so just a little bit of that, and then just kind of... It's the first time Jackson's been by himself in... It has. A long time, because he was in the military for forever, and then he city hopped a little bit until he ran into those guys. Mm-hmm. But it's the first time he's been by himself in a while. Um, doesn't have to sleep, so he can walk longer. Yep. So that's bad and good, but mm-hmm. bad. I do think he tries to, uh, as he gets to overnight and needing to, to, to crash out for the tight, his tight four, he's going to try to make, I don't know, some kind of little safe haven somewhere that he can actually like lay down and sleep. And he has Gary sleep during the day, so he has somebody to keep watch. Yep. Um, but he's going to try to sleep, like actually sleep, and mm-hmm. see if he can get another dream as he's on his way there. Sure. Besides attempting to sleep properly, which Jackson has not been able to do in over a year, are you doing anything else other than, like, you know, creating a safe spot to do so? I guess you mean, like, from a spell mechanic standpoint? Yeah. Yeah. Or not. We're um, playing in the I space, think, my man. So sometime during the day, Jackson would have cast aid on himself for some temp HP. Jackson would have given himself a Fey Wrench motivational speech, mm-hmm. which is very bad, but uh, Gary helps him get through it just for some buffs. Mm-hmm. It's weird. He's alone but he feels fairly confident and comfortable that he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. So what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Not until he gets there. What's the worst thing that can happen? No, nothing bad ever happened after you said that. Nothing, ever. Nothing, at all. Certainly never in the woods. Anything can happen in the woods. It's early afternoon on the second day, and you have been walking all day. Gary, every so often, well, you know, just kind of tap on your chest and to ask to allow to fly out and do a circle. And it's that morning where he is able to start properly giving you a heading. Hey, I get just across this uh, this tree line here. We should be able to get there. All right, great. Is there any signs of life out there? Uh, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's cold and awful out here. Uh, so everything is asleep, I think. And that's when, for the first time in... Two days, the concordance comes to life. Jack, kiss her good, my boy. And before your eyes, a pair of wings appears out of thin air, and there is nothing in them. It wraps around nothing, and you can see these wings, they are moth wings, open. And in between them is Addie. 
Jackson stops and his hand goes to his weapon. Gary? Yeah, boss. Remember those shitty trees? Yeah, what about them? Oh, hey, who's she? (laughs) You, okay, you can see, okay, you can see her, because last time nobody else could. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I see her. I'm, like, kind of shaking my back. It's like, I did not know what wings were going to feel like, but it wasn't that. Caw, they're normal. Oh, yeah, because you've had them your whole life, Archie. Wait a minute. Is that that guy? Eddie? Hi, Jackson. Is this... Hold on. Is that... Tell me something only Addie would know. I folded Jeremiah's costumes in a way that it haunted him for the rest of his life. Okay, tell me something that only Addie and I would know. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fault. I'll, I can own that one. We always sign our letters XOXO. Perfect. And I'll just drop the weapon and go to her. Mm-hmm. Wrap her up in a big hug. I will hug him back. It's good to see you, Jackson. Yeah, um, you're not supposed to be here. I'm not mad. Whoa, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Um, hi. Hi. What? Well, Zephyr told me you'd be here, and I minor illusion the map that Zephyr illusion. Well, Zephyr said that you were going to this tower and you needed help. That is probably true. I'm definitely going to the tower. I thought I'd be able to do this by myself, or at least that I had to. Ahem. By yourself, my ass. Gary, I'm sorry. What about company? I'm sure you don't want to be alone the whole time. Also, I can get you back real fast. Company sounds lovely. Here, you're going to need this, and I... You need all of these blankets because it is it is so damn cold out here. Yeah, no, you were not. I'm expecting. used you to it. You literally at this point. came from the desert. Yeah, and there is a solid like four or five inches of snow on the ground. Yeah, I was not expecting it to be this cold. Yeah, me either. I got dropped into this a day and a half ago. It's not great, but I'm kind of used to it now. So here, you take this. All right. Hand off you. the blankets. All right, fine. Just wrap up the blankets over top of my wizarding robes just my head sticking out archie one in here oh sure let me fly around though oh shit what's that i point to gary is this is this your little fey friend you were talking about in your letter yeah this is gary gary this is addy and this is fairy dragon climbs out of the breastplate and just kind of does a lap around you and lands on one of your shoulders Archie flies down and lands on the other one of your shoulders, and your shoulders are very heavy as the two of them just stare at each other. Well, now that we're all friends. <laughs> uh, Gary, this is Addie, and this is Archie the 27th? This is Archie the 6th? Yeah, he exploded me. when a harpy shot an arrow at him. <sighs> that really did suck. Don't recommend it. Call! Yeah, that sounds miserable. Well, okay, well, here, you two go be friends and tell us how close we are. Like, can you just go up, please? It, yeah, I was like, about to say it's literally, like, across the tree line. Oh, okay. We're, so we're, like, right there? And yeah, there's yeah, nothing. No, we're... There's nothing there. There's nothing moving. No, nah, nothing. Come on, Addy. It's, we got a tower to go through, and I guess God left me something. Well, I mean, going to a tower to get something God left you is better than going to a tower to fight a lich. Let's go. I just start Wait, walking. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? I turn around. Oh yeah. Um, I fought Granor in his spectral form as he was coming back to get half of the phylactery. Oh, that reminds me. Magus Diamond is compromised by mind flares. Uh, Jackson is no longer cold. Is there a steam coming out of his ears at this point? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's um. Let's let's maybe let's go sit down <laughs> since it's right there and I think <laughs> what the four of you crest into an opening in the trees and you are met with for all intents and purposes a tower it's at kind of an odd angle Uh, made of a single piece of white marble. It is stained and faded with 
years of neglect and ignorance in the middle of this forest. No one has touched it. No one has been here in quite some time. Even the marks of animals barely seem to pass through. A squirrel, maybe, but nothing beyond that. A simple walk around the tower shows that there is no clear point of entry. But 50 feet up, if what you have been shown to be true is such, there is a hole at the top that will allow you to descend into the temple. All right, you're going to catch me up on the happening to the world later. I uh, did, did Saphir catch you up on what we did? Uh, no. All right. Um, so Gaia's going to be the god of the wilds now. Oh, okay. That's Yeah, cuz That's fun. Yeah, cuz their go- Yeah, their gods are gone. Oh, that's not fun. No, so we had to deal with that. There was also a Rakshasa. Um, Would I know what a Rakshasa is? Give me an Arcana check. Second roll of the game is a 24. Oh, yeah. You know Rakshasas. Um, I just watch. I watch Addy, like, mentally go through what this is, and I try to, like, bend my hands backwards. Be like, yeah, it was like this. I immediately, minor illusion of Rakshasa. (laughs) This? Bigger. I make it bigger. There's like a ripple and, effect as I recast it. Yeah. Deadlier, sharper claws, and um, oh, orange stripes. I do all these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's him right there. All right. That was not great. Uh, no, they aren't great. Um, I'm glad that y'all are still alive. Those things are crazy. It was, um, it was closer than it maybe should have been it's exactly as close as it needed to be we're all okay now and that's the gist of it so there was that and then there was also um oh amare is a god now but you i think i told you You that part that part i'm really happy for you i'm happy for him too good for him yeah it's uh it's uh for the good of everything i guess i'm kind of lonely now but you know they're both gone more or less so uh yeah so they're finishing that all up and we're gonna go kill a lich and a bunch of mind mind flares flares mind flares like bright lights flare different spelling same sound yes okay so these things are like wait can they shoot fireworks out of those tentacle things no Um, mind flares they they can now hold on one second (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, um, they have mind magic. They can do things like telekinesis. They can, um, for lack of a better term, they can mind blast and basically stun you. It's That's they're really not... scary. Okay, so it is kind of like what we saw in the Golden Inspiration Vision. You guys got to take Golden Drug Bugs. Master B never let me do that. Well, it was twice. Actually, yeah, well, he didn't know about the first time, um, and he wasn't too thrilled about it. But the second time, he uh, he was definitely uh, helping us along and getting high off his own supply. Oh, so, Master B, you are so lucky. I don't have sending prepared right now. Hey, that's uh, Grand Entreater. Grand that's Entreater true. B. That's true. He is Grand Entreater now. I'm going to have a hard time remembering that. At, I'm look. Zafir is apparently one now too. So yeah, he just yeah, showed me know. that. Oh, he also t- uh, gave me this, and she holds up. Her focus is actually a golden chain with a piece, a long piece of metal with arcane symbols uh, attached to it, kind of like a dog tag sort of thing. And then sure. on that chain, uh, she also put the arrowhead that you gave to Zafir. Jackson smiles and goes beat red in the same instance. It's great. It's a good look. <laughs> Yes, it is. Right. Yep. I gave him that. Mm, I gave him that to give to you. What? Uh, um, like scratch the back of his head. Very uh, still red. Uh, uh, what? What did he uh, say about that cool little thing? He said it was for me, and that it was a promise that you would come back alive. Yep. Yep. That's yep. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yep. So. I pull my uh, captain's bars down so I, the arrowhead kind of pops out. 
next to that tiny little face sword that's still there too. Mm-hmm. So there's another arrowhead right there. It's very similar. These are actually the first things that were made after Amorea ascended from his his temple forge. Oh, that's amazing. We just I just thought it was important for us to like I don't know, mark it and um you know, I wanted you to have one. It seemed important. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Very sweet, Jackson. Yep. So this tower, right, yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's an opening up there. I don't know what's in there. I don't know. Johnny just said it was, like, ruined. So we'll see. Uh, apparently somewhere in there is something he left or something powerful to be reclaimed or something that helps. I don't know exactly what it is or what we're walking into. Let's, there's no door. Uh, how high is this tower again? It's about 50 feet up. 50 feet up. Awesome. Hey, Archie, can you check the top of the tower and make sure there aren't any creepy crawlies or monsters up there? Cool! Archie takes off, flies into the air. I will, um, I will grab Jackson just like by the shoulder cloak so I can like look through Archie's eyes and see what's at the top of the tower. Um, you see for miles around, Archie goes up above the tree line mm-hmm. and you can see a good distance around. Um, you can see plumes of smoke coming up a good distance away. Something seems to be going on in the distance. But right here, right now, you do see that tower and down in the top of the tower, you do see it is opened. It descends much more than 50 feet. But as it goes down, you are not seeing anything creepy crawly. Do you keep him up there to kind of keep an eye out or do you send him in? Um, is it just like a hole? Is there a place that we would be able to stand on top or is it just an opening? It is an opening. The thickness of the wall is about three feet. So you could have just enough room to like sit at the top and not immediately fall in. But it would not be super steady. Hold on. Let me check something. Uh... Sure. He has a passive perception of 14, an advantage on perception checks that rely on sight, and his stealth would just be a plus three. Yeah, I'm going to have him fly down. Cool. What is his, um, and it, does he have dark vision? He does not. Okay. So your dark vision does not carry through to him. I didn't think so. So you send him down, Mm -hmm. um, and you it is a long drop. It's about 100 feet Mm -hmm. from the top into the bottom. Um, Archie lands in a pile of ash and is in what he can see. Um, the, the room would be classified as dim light, so he can see a good bit around. Okay. There is a brazier in the middle of the room. Mm. You can see some stone pews built into the wall surrounding. You do see other smokestacks as well, but it looks like they are, are either broken off somewhere before the surface, so they are not reaching all the way to the top. Mm-hmm. And uh, you do see a door leading out. Uh, I know how we can get in. Jackson's hand has just gone to Addie's hand on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. This is all right. This is uh, you do the thing Mordecai does. Okay, cool. That's great. <laughs> I got you. This yep. is. I can get us in. Are you ready to go, or do you need a? Yep. Uh huh. Well, hold on. I haven't. I haven't. You know, like impressed you yet. So hold on. <laughs> Stump stunting is a habit. I like Wait, so jolt you... out of Archie's vision at that. <laughs> Wait, so can you fly us up there, or do we have to climb? Neither. Can you get us up there? Okay. No, there is no going up. It's just a tower straight down into the earth. Right, so we have to go up and then go all the way down? No, we don't. You have, you're going to get us, uh, okay, magic is the answer, okay. Magic is the answer. (laughs) Magic is the answer. Okay, well, I'm going to do several magical things in a row, and then you do your magical thing. Okay. Uh, I cast aid on both of us. So our match max HP goes up by five. So that's aid. Aid is not concentration. So we're so magic is going to win the day. All right. That is a wonderful thing. I totally believe in our abilities to do this. 
and we're gonna do some crazy god shit today. You've ne- have you ever actually like gone dungeon delving? Because that's what we're about to do here. No, but I've like, been to a couple of towers. Those were well, uh, not great experiences, but well, now we're gonna solve this tower, I guess. And I cast motivational speech. <laughs> Which is also not concentration. Yay. So now we get five temp HP. Ooh. And we have advantage on wisdom saves. Oh, that's nice. Um, How long does that last? Uh, that lasts for an hour. We have uh, the advantage on wisdom saves. And then if we're hit by an attack, we have an advantage on the next attack roll. Um, and that only lasts while we have temp HP. Okay. Cool. And then, because Jackson's prepared for this moment... Well, Jackson will cast Enhance Ability and upcast it because he figured out how to do that. Mm. So we'll get Cat's Grace for both of us. Mm-hmm. So we have advantage on all dexterity, and we don't take damage from falling 20 feet or less. Nice. That one is concentration. Awesome. So J- Jackson just like very quickly goes through all of the magic he possibly knows. I'm going to cast Mage Armor, and then I'm going to cast... Dimension door. Yep, I I knew this one was coming. Oh, that's oh I oh I hate this one. All right, all right. I I'm make a lasso, all right, deep breath. <laughs> make a lasso sort of gesture, and a giant wheel of color just starts to spin. And in, on the other side, you can just see the inside of the tower with the ash. Whoa, this is way better than the last time somebody. Okay, great. We just walk through. Yep, the two of us walk through. Fuck, that's cool. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you. All right, I've done, yeah, I've done everything I possibly can. It's probably enough. Probably enough. We walk into the tower. You step in to a forge of Amarea Dejani. You find yourselves in a massive room, 100 feet long on any side. It's dark. Fortunately, your elven night vision does carry through and allow you to see this room pretty clearly. What do my elf eyes see? You see two more smokestacks, invisible and buried from above, joining at your side. You see other forges matching with each of those smokestacks as well. In the center of the room, you see a brazier decorated along its sides with uh, swords and shields and helms. Its firewood is stocked and ready to go. It is clear of ash, but its wood is dry and cold. Well, all right. Um, Does it remind me of the feel I got when I went through either of Amarea's other temples? Because there was kind of residual magic, and it kind of... Yes, 100%. It has that Johnny flavor? Yeah. Now, this place feels very familiar to you, Jackson. All right, so this is, so over here are forges, and there's some more over here, and they go out that way, and that one's clean. Huh, okay. Um, Addy, last time we did this, uh, a bunch of undead fire skeletons tried to kill us. Um, well, that was the first time, actually, and then uh, the cinder pope tried to kill us, so that was a, that was a, it was fine. We were fine. Um, but then the other time, like, we had to fight these weird, like, alternate versions of ourselves through a giant mirror of glass. That wasn't fun. So, I guess <laughs> this is going to, this is probably going to suck. Would it be beneficial for me to conjure a friend? A help. I mean, we friend. already have, t- we already have t- two. Okay, so if I were to conjure a being out of air, earth, fire, or water, would that be helpful? Ah, uh, the it might be. Uh, let me check this uh, forge out. Let me check out this main one here in the center first. Uh, you go to the brazier. Um, yeah. And the brazier, you can tell, is not a forge. This is something meant for light, not for heat, not for craft. This is this is its own thing. Okay. Uh, and but it looks different. There's, it's not covered in ash like the rest of everything. It's else. not covered in ash. This looks much better maintained. Does it look like it's been used? Not recently. Uh, certainly, at some point there is char on the wood, but that's what okay. you're seeing. But it doesn't look like you mentioned there was wood that had been there. Does it look like it's been restocked? Um, 
it is not not necessarily restocked would not be the word. It was never unstocked. Gotcha. Cool. More magic. Yep. All right. Uh, I'm going to turn on the lights, I think. We'll go from there. I shield my eyes. I, I put Archie in my pocket so that the sudden thing of light does not blind us. Mm-hmm. Um, how so do you yeah, turn this so on? I, I, I uh, stop and say a prayer to Johnny. Mm-hmm. Johnny God. And uh, take out just some, some tinder and flint and go to strike it to light it. Um, and I just kind of assume that it's going to work. The humble flint and tinder strike true as you light this brazier. There is a moment where sparks fly and land impotently on the wood and nothing happens. And then in a moment, golden flame rushes across the brazier. There it is. And the room is filled with lights. And you can see it even seems to like sink into the floor and the space in between the cobbled brick beneath your feet pulses just a little bit of light as it fills out the room just kind of finds its way around and then eventually goes out the door yep that seems about right for one of these places um you ready i'm ready i let archie go so he can fly around let's try to be quiet about thank you for joining us here on another path you can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and our network at ghostlightmedia.net. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia. A special thanks to our donor, Nathan N., or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can find me on Twitter at TQLoudly, Ryan at RyanRolled20, and Christina at Phoenix Stargirl. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. And until then, remember, magic is the answer. Oh, no, I've pulled. Hold on. <laughs> Ryan, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to play d and <laughs> I would love to. I pulled my internet out of my ceiling. You need that. Okay. All right. We good? We should be. I good. Instead of running the cables on the ground, I ran them on the ceiling. Good call. Usually. Which means they're on hooks, and mm -hmm. it got wrapped around my mic. Boom. Ah, boom. yeah. I'll do the it. Boom. Decided it wanted to be friends. Fair enough. All right. <clears throat> 13.09. 13.10. We're still good. 11, 12, 11, 12 yep. 13. Cool. All right. Let's do it. This has been a Ghost Light Media production.